Hi, I'm Alvaro Enrique and welcome to the second level of our Intermediate course uh, as we teach at the Escola de Musica de Brasilia. Uh, we call in our course study this the technical level, which, be, which would be uh, more or less like in, over the world people call an Intermediate course. This is study number one by Soar. It's a piece that features harmony, but mainly polyphony. It's a very polyphonic work. But some people always ask me when I tell that this is a polyphonic work. But Alvaro, how can this be a polyphonic piece if Soar is a classic composer? Well, polyphony was invented in the Middle Age. And it's something that is present in classical music from the the 12th century on. Music being composed nowadays will feature polyphony. Of course, each style will use polyphony differently, but this resource is something that is part of the classical music so much that some people use polyphony as one of the main characteristics that differentiate classical to popular music. Uh, the polyphony present here at this sort of study is more or less like of a choir. In we have uh, we play very often the notes together. There are some exceptions, as you have noticed, it, but many the old melodies are moving at the same time. But it is your polyphony. Our edition, which you can download for free in the link described below, unfortunately has two problems. Uh, one is it features the old number numbering system by Segovia, which is outdated. Uh, it, you, it's best if you use the numbering from the original publications. And there are no fingerings. So therefore, if you're watching me in a platform which I can attach PDF files, I will attach an Utex edition by SOAR. If not, you can look for this piece at imslp.org or at soarfree.fr and look for this study and you see an Utex edition for free and it's a public domain edition, so you can use it with no problem at all. And it will feature fingerings, probably by Swap himself. So, what, what, how should you work this piece? First of all, it's very important in this work for you to practice first playing the notes and releasing as fast as possible, as if there were electricity running through the frets and when you close the system and you when the strings touch the frets you receive some electrical shock and you want to go out that fast. Uh, it's mind especially when you're studying that way if you're pressing the fingerings very near the frets as it should be. One of the main challenges of this work is it's a very thin crystal with the three melodies and if some of these voices buzz it's gone so to avoid buzzing the best course of action is to uh, play always very near the fret and really memorize going to that position to, it's so to master that you have to uh, release, think what you're going next, and then play. Think and play. Think, so no. Finger three will go here, finger four will go here, finger one will go there. Okay, now let's play. And then you go at once. Think first, take the time you need to think, and then go at once. If you do the opposite, which is, oh, I think something else, oh, what was that ball game? What was the result? Oh, 
So you are, you are think, thinking on something else and you are adjusting in slow motion your hand to reach the position. What you're studying and what you're mastering is how to not go straight to the position and then after some tries, find it. And you don't want to master that. You have to master how to go there immediately, like an idiot. Without, you think fastly what's going on and then you go at once. And then you keep not only the legato, but also you avoid buzzing, squeaks, and so on. Nice. Um, this is pretty much 70% of the work, at least that is required for you at this level. It's play everything legato without buzzing. You can avoid the squeaks just be, being uh, careful that Remember, when you release the note up, it doesn't squeak. It squeaks when you release and move to the side. So if you release the finger fast, as I've told you to do, and move, there will be no squeak at all. So I have anticipated, sorry. anxious <laughs> so if you study well this you master the legato and no buzzing and that will it's at the level you are required 70% of the work what about the next 30% for the next 30% 30, uh, 30 I would say that 20% is playing each voice individually, separately, at the best musical way possible. Think of an orchestra player. When someone that plays even a not so interesting instrument like a bassoon or an oboe, this person has family, has a boyfriend or a girlfriend, has students, has a father, a mother, sister, brothers, friends, and when they go and attend a concert which this oboe, oboe is playing, he wants them to see he do, him doing the best, not minding if the melody is not the best or the most interesting one, even if it's something like... something so simple they still want to play and sound their best they want to impress their loved ones so play that way play each voice separately but the most musical way possible shape those melodies playing them very musically if you use just two simple rules they will sound amazing rule number one when melodies go up they are louder when melodies go down they are softer so when other 
that you can use that works very well, especially in tonal music, is when it's release, you play soft. And when it's tension, you play louder. So. I misread something here but then just keep in mind those two rules and you can make great music from that okay how about what the, the there's something uh, missing also uh, what what's that uh, it is for you to understand better the harmony this piece, because of the polyphony used, uh, Soar made some choices that uh, it's a little harder to analyze the harmony. And then I won't go through with you in detail for that because at this level you're not required to. But it's very important for you to at least understand the six main chords of the tonality and to keep in mind that every time there is something different from that, uh, this, this new different chord, it will be attention to one of those six. What are those six main chords of the tonality? The first one is the tonic, which in the case is C major. The subdominant, which is F major. The dominant, which is G major. On the chord that you have to keep in mind is the tonic relative, A minor. The subdominant relative, D minor. And then the dominant of the tonic relative, which is best if you play with the seventh. Those are the six main chords, tonic, subdominant, relative, tonic, subdominant, dominant, tonic relative, subdominant relative, dominant of the tonic relative, uh, which is C major, C, E, G, F major, F, A, C, G major, which is G, um, B, D, F, a minor, which is A, C, E. D minor, which is D, F, A. And E major, which is E, G sharp, B, D. If you find something different from that, for example, uh, you will soon on the piece find this. Which chord, which chord is that? understand anything different from these chords as a tension to some of those chords. So tension more. If you just figure it out and write down on your score those six chords and understand anything else going on as a tension to one of those six chords, you will be able to play very expressively. So we have C major here, tonic. tension chord, so more. Then dominant, which is more tension. Then A, A minor, which is more less tonic relative, is soft tonic relative. Then dominant more. Then uh, you can understand this is just two notes, E and D. So it's a little bit harder, but you can understand that as a, 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 as a C major without the C, A, a minor, soft, G major, dominant, dominant, tonic. And then if you keep just recognizing those chords, writing down and playing the tonic softer. 
subdominant in the middle, dominant more anything else, even more, then it's fine. That's the very few percents that you need to play this study very musical, very intense for the level you are working. Welcome to the second level and have fun.